we're going to go on. We're going to go on to a very closely related topic, and this will also be extremely important for understanding some of the constructs of agent-based modeling. So uh, we're going to switch over to a different set of slides here, also posted, and um, these ones will have to do with this notion of this probability per unit time of transitioning. In a way, this is uh, the other side to the coin for what we just discussed, of what we just discussed. So you'll hear me make utterances about hazard rates and temporal probability densities. Um, uh, these are all sort of uh, useful terms um, in a more specialized context. But what we're talking about is a, is, a, is a probability per unit time. And these things are legion. We see them with stocks and flows. We saw them with, with that other one. I mean, my gosh, just to link it in with, with what we, we just saw here, I'll, I'll emphasize that this precisely was, was that. We, we, we saw, uh, we saw it um, in, in this. This mortality rate is a, is a chance per unit time of leaping, a probability per unit time of leaping, OK? And, and we call it a, a hazard rate, okay? Um, uh, and they're everywhere. We see them wherever, you know, first order delays, very commonly they're phrased as that. Sometimes they're phrased as mean times. And it turns out when we're dealing with, uh, with uh, agent-based modeling and state charts, we're gonna be seeing them in spades. Uh, if this looks to you like a UML state chart, it is with good reason because it's designed exactly after that. And this is a primary way in which we describe, just as the stock and flow model describes states, the, the things that change those states, and by implication, the rules on, so these are the actions that change the state like transitioning, and the rules that govern those, like in the form of formulas. So these state charts will be a, key and, and the single biggest important way of specifying the dynamics of agents, okay? Um, it's a much bigger vocabulary. We'll have events and we'll have messages by which agents interact and so on. But these are one of the, the biggest uh, ways in which uh, we describe agent dynamics. And here we have states. Um, so the, these things illustrate the states, just like we illustrated the states here. We have an illustration of possible states here. And just as we had flows here, um, here, an individual, this is purely at an individual level, um, will be in one of these states at a given time, and they will have a certain rule or a certain chance of going from one thing to the next um, along these transitions. And different things will govern them. So this describes the possible states, the actions that can change the state in the form of these transitions, and the rules that govern those actions. Here, there were all formulas. Here, you have things like asynchronous interaction between agents, like you've exposed me to COVID-19, um, or I recover after a certain amount of time based on a probability per day of recovery, say, probability per unit time. Or I, you know, after some fixed amount of time, something happens. Um, so, um, I want, I want to understand these things because once again, you have to understand they're a continuous thing. And, and earlier, uh, one of the students had mentioned, I think Corwin had mentioned um, uh, continuous compounding of interest, very much the same idea. The idea is it's always going on. Um, and here you're always at, at risk. You know, at any time you could, God forbid, get infected by COVID-19 or the flu or what have you. It's, it, you know, it's, it's a continuous process. It's not like once a day you say, okay, now's my chance to flip the dice and see if I'm infected. It's going on all through the day. Um, and, uh, and you can imagine um, uh, this as kind of the limit um, of a process. Um, and I'm gonna try to build up intuitions by starting with it in the crudest possible way. Imagine we have some interval of time 
between zero and t, time t. Um, and we have a probability per unit time of transitioning of alpha. And so maybe it's a 10% per day of transitioning. And, and this is from zero to 20 days, um, something like that. Um, so, maybe, so maybe alpha is 0 0.01, just to make it simple. And we have of 20 days. Um, in the simplest case, if we only had one kick at the can, um, if, if we only flip the, the, the coin one time, we have a probability per unit time of alpha. So it's probably 0 0.01 per unit time. We have 20 units of time, T, mm, 20, 20 units of time. So it's 0 0.01 times 20, because this is 0 0.01 per day, tw 20 days. So if we're just considering we have one kick of the can at 20.2, so 20% 20 chance of transitioning. And the probability of not transitioning is one minus that, 0.8. Um, so we have a probability of transitioning of 0.2 and a probability of not transitioning of 0.8. Um, let's imagine. Um, so here I'll say, you know, say this is equals 0.01 and uh, T, let's suppose, uh, say 20. Uh, and so this will be, this would be here 0 0.2, and this would be uh, 0 0.8, uh, okay? Um, just to, to make it concrete. Um, now imagine you have two kicks at the can. Um, it, it's not just at the end of it, you say, oh, it's 20 units, and each of them I had a probability of 0 0.01, so it's 0 0.2, 0 0.01 times 20 or 0 0.2. Um, no, imagine if instead you have two kicks of the can. So it, you consider it halfway through as well. Um, and and that's, that's occurring at time t over two, right? Um, and then you'll consider it uh, uh, for, for, the, for the next phase. This should be, remind you of that numerical integration we saw earlier. Um, so suppose we have these two chances, two kicks of the can, one halfway through and one the other. Um, um, so the probability of transitioning over an interval of length t over two is alpha times t over two. Remember, this, is a, this isn't a probability. It's a probability per day, um, say. And, and we have 20 days. And so this is 10 days. So my probability of transitioning in the first 10 days, this is 20 days, this is 10. Um, my probability of transitioning in the first 10 days is, is 10 times 0.01, um, that's alpha times t, t is, so alpha is 0.01, t is 20, and alpha divided by two is 10. So it's 0.01 times 10. So it's 0.1 in the first time. And the probability of not uh, transitioning in that first interval is 0.1, uh, sorry, it's 0.9. Probability of not transitioning. My probability of transition is 0.1, probability of not transitioning is 0.9. Um, okay, but, and, and that's good. Um, uh, so uh, if we think about it, what's my probability of, of not transitioning over the entire interval? Well, I've got to dodge the bullet for the first half, and then I've got to dodge it for the second half, right? Um, this first half, I've probably point. 0.1 for going. Second half, I have uh, um, of, of going um, uh, of going over, and I've got to avoid that. And then independently, if I've avoided that, I've got to I've got to avoid this one. So given that I haven't gone over, I'll, I have to avoid this one. I have to avoid both uh, going over in the first and going over the second. The chance that I remain still in the state in the, after the first half is one minus alpha t over two. That's what we saw here. Um, the probability of remaining after time t over two in the state is one minus t over two, um, right? Uh, so if I have, uh, again, it's 0.01. And if, if t is, 
is 10 or is 20. Um, it'll be one minus 0 0.01 times uh, 20 divided by two or times 10. So it'll be one minus 0 0.1, which is 0 0.9. Um, okay, uh, I have to transition, not, I have to not transition the first time and then not transition in the next time. What's my chance of not transitioning the next time? Well, if, I'm, if I haven't transitioned yet, it's that same thing. So the probability of remaining in the state all through here of not having transitioned any time in here is one minus this thing. And, and the fact that this is squared is reflecting the fact that I have to avoid it the first time. The probability of that, avoiding it the first time times the probability of avoiding it the second time. Um, and it's only if I avoid it the first and the second um, that I don't transition. So the probability of transitioning over the entire time and either of these is one minus this. Um, this is the probability of not transitioning. This is the probability of um, in the entire time. This is the probability of transitioning somewhere in the entire time, whether in the first or the second. Um, any question? about this before I go on to a generalization of this. Any, any questions? Uh, would it be helpful for me to annotate the slide like I did back here with the actual numbers? Would that be useful as we're together? I think that would be very useful for studying and for helping us understand the material. OK, sure. Um, so that's good. So this would be, uh, I'll, I'll do a little bit of this right now and I'll try to do it more completely uh, later, but this is, is going to be this and that's going to be uh, 0 0.1. Okay, um, I'll, I'll shrink that down a bit. Uh, there we go. And uh, this will be, um, one minus 0 0.1, which is equal to 0.9, okay? Um, uh, great, and, uh, and so here, I will note that it's going to be, and I'll fill in the details and post it to the site later, but it's going to be here, one minus 0 0.9 squared. Sorry, I'm writing it LaTeX. Um, 0 0.9 squared, which will be 1 minus uh, 0.81, which is equal to 0 0.19. There we go. Um, it turns out uh, the probability of remaining, uh, excuse me, uh, you mumbled. No, 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 no. Um, uh, yes, uh, yes, that's correct. Uh, uh, OK, what, what am I doing wrong here? OK. Um, a probability of transition over the entire interval. That is correct, yeah. You'll notice it's not twice the 0.1. You might think that, oh, each half you have 0.1. So you have 0.1 in the first half, 0.1 in the second half. But that's not true because if you went in the first half, you can't go in the second half. Um, and so the probability of transitioning over this entire time is 0.19. It's just like, in the last lecture, that last set of slides, I should say, um, you know, when we drew it down from 1,000 to 900, there were no longer 1,000 people left to die. There were only 900. And so it Professor drained more Osgood. slowly. Yes, yes. Um, 0 0.9 squared is 0.89. So 1 minus 0.89 should be 0.11. I don't think so. 0 0.9 squared is 0.81. Um, right, 0 0.9 uh, squared, nine times nine is 81, so. Oh yeah, no, that's my mistake, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I love numbers. So um, I, 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 I love my numbers. Um, so no, no, no worries, no worries. Um, I, I appreciate any, any corrections people may have. So uh, in general, if, if we start to think about extending this further, like with three intervals, we'll get a generalization of this. And the probability of transitioning over the entire time interval will be this. So um, you, let, me, let me go back a couple of slides. 
Uh, here, the probability of transitioning of, of not transitioning over the entire time is is uh, is is this. Uh, the probability of not transitioning over the entire time um, here is is this. So initially is one minus alpha t. You could think of this as one minus alpha t to the one. Oh, sorry, one minus alpha t all quantity to the one. Here it's one minus alpha t. Uh, divided by two um, squared. Here it's one minus alpha t divided by three cubed. Um, and in each case, the probability of transitioning over the entire interval is one minus that. Um, so uh, you know we uh, we get something of this form. Um, and I don't know if people will. Um, uh, we'll recognize this. Does anyone recognize a formula that looks like this? Anyone who loves numbers like me recognize a formula that looks like this? If you have one minus something divided by n all to the n power, uh, and you start to Expo think about n, n getting really big, what is it? It's the what? Exponential. It's the exponential. Uh, it's the exponential. Power yeah. alpha t. Yes. So, so exactly. If, if you have this, the probability of remaining in the state, the only way you remain in the state is if you dodged it every one of these times. That's why you get the multiplication. You have to dodge it the first one. Oh, man. And then you got to dodge it the second one. And then you got to dodge it the third one. Only if you dodge all three of them can you survive, right? That's the only way you've, you can do it. You've got to dodge these three bullets. Um, that's why it's you know, like one minus uh, alpha t cubed. And if you have n of them, you've got to dodge them all of those times. You've got to dodge it the first time and the second time and the third time. And so your chance of having dodged it all those times goes up as this. Um, you're, you're just dividing this entire interval alpha t up into smaller and smaller pieces, uh, each of size alpha t divided by n. And you've got to avoid transitioning in each of them. Um, so it's exactly the principles here. You know, here I had to dodge it once. That's all. Just dodge it once. Here I had to dodge two of them. Here I had to dodge three of them. Um, here I had to dodge n of them. And it's only then I can survive. And as n goes, gets larger and larger. If you did this for a hundred, if you did it for a thousand, you did it for ten thousand, you did it for a million, it's going to be approaching this e to the minus alpha t. And it looks like this. And if this looks familiar, it should, with good reason. In fact, I will post, if anyone wants to play around with it, taking advantage of the fact that we have these, uh, this up right now, I will post to the example models, boom, um, a model which exactly illustrates this. So it's in my models, and there we go. Um, and I used it to sort of draw this um, um, picture. Um, so at first, your probability one of being in the stock, uh, for some reason, isn't showing that first little bit. And then it drains, and it drains down exponentially. If this looks very similar to what we saw in the last, um, you know, the last set of slides, it should, because it's a first order delay. It's just it starts at one, and you have a certain probability of leaving per day, and it's a continuous process of leaving. You could leave at any time during that day. You could leave in the first second. You could leave in the second second. You could leave in the first millisecond. But as you consider smaller and smaller intervals, your chance of having left in a super small interval is very small, but they all compound. They all compound. And it drops slower and slower because, well, probability of still being around to leave is, is much lower now. And so the probability of you leaving in the next little bit, the next, say, 10 days, is a lot smaller than it is in the first 10 days. Um, this is, as I say, kind of like the other side of the coin uh, of what we saw before. So um, here, what we're dealing with is a continuous trial, a continuous chance of leaving. 
when we see this mortality rate, it's not saying like, you know, um, across the entire first year, across the entire first year, you, um, your elapsed chance of having left is, is 0.01. Uh, you know, if you have a mortality rate of 0.01. No, it's saying uh, there's this continuous risk you're subjected to. And um, it's a risk per you know, time, let's say per, per, per year. Um, in the first day of, that of the year, you're subjected to that risk too. It's just, it's a small risk on a per day basis. But, you know, if it didn't get you then, you're subjected to that same risk uh, for the next day and the next day. And the finer and finer grain time period, you're still subject to it. You could die from this at any point, but your chance of dying for that little period of time is very, very small. This is it's just like we did that numeric integration in the last time frame. So here, it's kind of this model where it's not, it's not that you have one kick of the can at the end about whether you die uh, over, this is on a grim, but whether this event happens over that entire period. It's like this a continuous, uh, continuous chance of it occurring, where just in any super small interval, the chance is low but it could happen at, at any time here. And this is what you get. And it's exactly the same mathematics as we saw in the last set of slides. Hazard rates are continuously operating. You could leave at any time. It's not that, you know, in a diagram like this or a diagram like this or like this, that it's only considering it once a year because you have a time unit of year. No, 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 no. It's considering all through that year from the very start to later. And here in any an agent-based modeling, we're gonna see the same thing. If, if this is a rate transition, which we have here and here and here and here and here, it's the same basic idea. Someone could leave at, they could, they could wane their immunity, go back from recovered to susceptible at any time during that year. They could go from exposed to infective. Once they're infected, what this is saying is they can go from here to here at any time. Um, they can go from an asymptomatic state onto a symptomatic state at any time, just with some mean amount of time. Um, there's some chance they'll leave early. Even if the mean is much larger, there's some chance they'll leave very, very early on, and there's some chance they'll leave much later. So the mean of this, um, the mean time of this is 20 days, that's right here. But you could leave much earlier and you could leave much later than it. This is just the mean, this is the expected time, expected value of the time you leave. But you could see there's a long distribution, here, a long period of time here. Um, so this is a continuous trial. You're getting kicks of the can continuously, not, not once per time unit. It's continuous, um, it's just ongoing. Now, this is one of the reasons I emphasize you in class from this seat that, that um, it's important to recognize that these rates here are rates per unit time. Uh, in other words, they're probabilities per unit time. They're not probabilities. The probabilities per unit time. They could be greater than one. If we had a probability greater than a probability uh, of rate greater than one, let's suppose we had a rate of two here. What's the average amount of time someone spends in this stock? Anyone? If this is a rate of two, the average amount of time that they spend in the stock is what? Anyone remember that? I think half a day. Half a day. It's half a day. If we have a rate of alpha, the average amount of time that they spend in the stock is a form. Give me a formula involving alpha. You, you, you hit it exactly. It's. Um, it's, uh, oh my gosh, like probably rate of unit time, time divided by po or population divided by rate of unit time. Uh, okay. No, uh, I'm sorry. Uh, the average amount of time they spend there is, it actually doesn't matter, depend on the population. It's, it's one over a, as yes, Amanda said. 
It's one over alpha. It's one over alpha. It's one over alpha. That's right. So if they have a mortality rate of, of two, it means they spend here an average amount of time of, of half a day. Uh, if they have a mortality rate of 0.1, that is 10%, 10% per day, they spend an average time of, of, of 10 days here. Um, um, and if they have mortality rate of 0.01 per day, um, they spend an average of 100 days here. If they have mortality rate of 10 up per day, then they, have a, they spend an average amount of time of 1 over 10 or 0.1 days. So, so this is a chance per unit time. It's a they're, they're getting kicks at the can all through that day. Um, uh, so, so it's a chance per unit time. We call it a hazard rate or temporal probability density is a kind of fancy way to put it. Uh, it's not a probability. Uh, like we could say um, there's a probability P of having transitioned across the entire interval. Um, and in fact, that, that's what we were talking about here. The probability of transitioning over the entire intervals is this. Um, this, is, this is different from alpha. Um, uh, this is quite different from alpha, actually. If alpha, is, if alpha t is really, really small, it turns out they're pretty similar numerically. But um, because of the Taylor series expansion of this, but uh, uh, some people might understand that. But um, the the point is like, this is not alpha. Like the chance of having transitioned over the entire time period is not alpha. Alpha is the chance per unit time that they will leave. And, and uh, you know, they may leave in the first bit, the later bit, and um, the chance of remaining um, uh, in there uh, goes down as this. And the chance of having transition sometime in this is 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 this. Um, uh, it's you know as alpha t gets really really large, um, uh, the chance that they uh, tr have transition sometimes in that period of time is approaches one. It doesn't approach infinity. It approaches one um, here. Uh, so uh, yeah. Um, and so we have these probabilities where we could say the probability they have transitioned over the entire interval, that's different than the probability per unit time of transitioning. And I, I kind of give a, a, a rule for deriving one from the other here, but basically um, you could say, okay, that the probability of having transition in one unit of time and basically plug in this, this formula one unit of time would be t equals one. And you could solve if, if you have a probability of having left over one time unit, uh, you could solve what alpha is for that. Alpha is not a probability, it's a probability per unit time. Um, okay, um, so uh, just to summarize, and I know this has been maybe tough for some of you, but here's the deal. Um, Time is continuous here. And for our, any logic uh, agent-based modeling, time will be continuous for almost all of our cases as well. We'll have a continuous model of time. Things can happen at any time. In system dynamics, we model things as happening at any time. Um, and uh, beneath the surface for system dynamics, the model is kind of simulating time in very, very small time steps. And it's trying to get very close to really what the, the true answer is for it um, by, by simulating very small periods of, of, of time. And it's numerical integration is, is what's going on. Um, now, hazard rates, these things like alpha, these rates represent probabilities per unit time of transition. Um, it's like we are, we're continuously at risk of something happening. We can have a hazard rate bigger than one. Um, and it just means it's likely to happen in less than one unit of time. Um, um, it, it applies all throughout the interval. It doesn't apply just at the end of the interval, you know, one year and now two years and, and each time I flip a coin. No, 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 no. It, it, all throughout that time, I have a, every day I have a small chance of, of it happening. Um, uh, for a hazard rate alpha, the probability remaining 
for time greater than or equal to t it goes down like this. It, it drops exponentially. If I have a certain probability per unit time of leaving, you know, it'll drop. Um, there's some probability you'll have less than the average, and there's some probability of more than the average amount of time there. Um, I could leave at any point in here. Um, uh, and um, yeah, and, and you know, the, the mean time is, is one over alpha if, if there's only one transition out. Um, now, importantly, and this is important for your, for your exercise, it's very important for your exercise, um, that the, this rate alpha scales linearly the length of the time unit. So if, if I have a daily hazard, a hazard per day of, you know, of, of uh, point, um, point oh, oh 0.001 per day, the weekly hazard rate will be seven times that. So 0.07. Uh, it actually, the, the math all uh, works perfectly. Uh, if I have 365 days of the year, if I have a daily hazard of, of 0.01, the yearly hazard will be 365 point times 0.01 or 3.65 approximately. Um, and, uh, and so it just, it scales linearly with it. Just like for our first set of slides, if we uh, were reasoning about this in days and we ask, how many people are dying per day here? And we say, well, it's you know uh, one person per day. That would be the equivalent of 365 people per year. It just scales linearly, right? Um, if you have, um, if every day you get, if if, if every day you get, um, uh, if every hour you get uh, ten emails, um, in the course of, um, in the course of a day you get 240 emails, right? 24 hours times 10 per hour is, is 240. It scales up linearly. And so it is with these rates. Don't be scared because they're greater than one. It just means that you'll leave on average in, in less than one unit of that time. Um, so, so just be aware those things scale linearly and that'll be key for answering the last question on that, that, uh, that assignment. Um, and this hazard rate is not a probability. We could talk about probabilities of having transitioned over the entire time, but that's not the same as the hazard rate itself. Um, the probability of having transitioned over the, the, the time is, is, goes as this, and uh, the actual hazard rate itself is, is different. Okay, uh, I've kept you too long, um, and I've kept you too long remotely, ladies and gentlemen. Um, uh, yeah, I see wonderful answers in there. Oh man, I neglectful. Um, I've kept you too long remotely. I'm looking forward to being together with you in cavernous Thorvaldsen 110 together in person in our first class after the break. And I will so enjoy um, walking, um, walking in the bear pit of that room and lecturing to you in person. And once again, uh, being able to use tables for percussive effect. Um, so uh, I look forward to meeting you in person. Uh, I will welcome anyone there who would like to come in person, but I also look forward to serving all those who would like to remain remotely for whatever reason um, through the term. And please, if you are feeling not up, up for it, you're feeling under the weather in a given day, this will include myself, um, we'll hold uh, we'll hold class remotely. If if I'm out ill during a day, that's rarely happened over the years, but it has happened occasionally. I will notify you a couple hours ahead, and we'll we'll just seamlessly go to uh, to all remote for the day. Thanks very much, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for your patience um, while we let the situation here in Saskatchewan settle down a bit, and I look forward to meeting you in person. Thank you. Uh, I will now hold office hours um, after a brief pit spot pit stop. Thank you.